Welcome back to part two of our live training session here with our FDRX7. In our last video, we started the calibration process building our base files so that we can get the engine fired off and get it running in our training tutorial here. So I broke up the base map videos into two separate videos. We did all the input configuration in the last video. This video, we're gonna be focusing on our ECU navigation part, building our actual tables out and going through all the details that are specific to a rotary engine, making sure we have all the details covered. Let's jump into our video here so we can complete the process with our base calibration and move into getting our engine fired up and running. Welcome back to our live training session here with our FD RX-7. Now in the last video, we started our base calibration process. We learned how to go in, set up our inputs and outputs and all the configuration details in the background. Now we're gonna turn our attention to the other portion of our base map creation. That's gonna be going in here to our ECU navigator on the side pane here and learning how to go in and set up our tables specific for a rotary application. So we've had some live trainings here with the Elite for piston engines. We're now gonna be working, going in and learning about how to do this for a rotary. Some things are the same and some things are different, but we need to make sure that we have safe conservative values to start with and then we can go through and calibrate everything um, once we get the engine fired up and running in the very next video. So we just need to focus on finishing up the base map creation. Let's go do that right now. I'm gonna go in here under ECU Navigator and I'm gonna start here at Lambda and we're gonna work our way down in all the different fields we have to select here and to work with. We're gonna be configuring everything and just making sure that everything is going to be set up here and functional and that the tables are configured right, the breakpoint axes and the scaling is gonna be right. So it's gonna represent this engine and we're not gonna have any kind of deviations or uh, any kind of oddities when we wanna get the engine fired up and running. So the first thing we have here is under our Lambda. We have our Lambda target table. Lambda target is gonna be doing two different roles here. It plays a role in our fuel calculations. We know that fuel mass is equal to air mass divided by target air fuel. The air mass is represented or simulated from our VE table. That's gonna be our base fuel table here. The target air fuel is gonna be the other portion of this. So if we know the air mass, we divide it by the target air fuel, it'll figure out what the fuel mass is going to be. If we know what the injector flow rate is going to be, the, the latency or the dead time data, the short pulse width data, all of that's factored in. It converts a fuel mass request into an injector pulse width. It delivers the fuel into the engine. And we should find, if everything's calibrated right, that we hit the target air fuel that we're specifying in this table here. The second role of this table is that we have our closed loop O2 sensor control enabled. That's gonna allow us to have feedback from the ECU. It's gonna allow it to add or subtract to the injector pulse width that's being calculated between our target air fuel table here and our base VE table here. It's going to tweak that to try to get it to the target air fuel. It's gonna look at our actual wideband, look at the uh, target air fuel coming from our table here, seeing how far they're off, and then trying to adjust the injector pulse without or how much fuel we're delivering, and then to get us to the target. So we want them to match, that's our goal. So we need to go and program this table so it makes sense. Now the rotary engine is gonna be a bit different than a piston engine as far as the target air fuels we wanna shoot for. Let's go and update this map here. So what I'm gonna do first is jump up here into my table axis setup, and we wanna configure this a little bit differently. Now this engine is going to have a street port, it's a mild street port. It's not gonna pull that great a vacuum. We probably won't be much below here, negative 20, even something like negative 17 inches of vacuum as far as the vacuum that the engine's gonna draw. So I'm gonna go and delete my first two data points in here in the table. So we're gonna get rid of negative 20, 29 and negative 23. We'll start here at negative uh, 20 inches of vacuum and then we can see as we ascend up here, we probably don't need this many data points. We can get rid of a lot of the data points here. So I'm gonna keep one. We'll do one here at three. Uh, we'll do one here at nine. Actually, we'll get run here. At, we'll get rid of the one at eight. Uh, I'll have one here at 15, and then we'll get run one of rid of the one here at 14. And I'll do one here at 20, and then I can do even one here at 30. And then we don't need these other data points, so we're just going to delete these and get rid of them. Actually, we'll pop that one back here. Now the map sensor is a three bar, so I'll go up to 28 pounds. We probably won't go up that high in boost. Um, we'll see what it ends up at, but we're not going to push it to the very extremes on this engine. This is pump gas and meth injection. We wanna make at least 500. We'll see what it does. So that's why we're scaling our uh, boost area here according for our table. Now in vacuum, this should be adequate. So negative 20 to approximately zero here. That's gonna be representing our vacuum area. That should be good. Engine RPM, we're not gonna go up to 10,000 RPM. 9,000 will be the maximum we're gonna spin this engine to. So I'm gonna keep my table scaled out to 9,000. Now I probably don't need data points here going from uh, we'll move in 500 RPM data points. So we don't want, don't need one here at 1750. We don't want, don't need one here at 2250. So we'll simplify some of our data points down. We'll click apply and we'll click okay. And then we can see here now our table shrunk down a little bit, a little bit easier to manage. Now the first thing with a rotary engine I want to talk about here, if we're looking in our vacuum area of operation, 
probably 4,000 RPM and below. We don't want to run. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel. So make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.